him, he probably was feeling that God was giving him the passion for his people. Yeah. You're talking about yeah. African American, like to speak for them. But I think it just got lost in the sauce when he got caught up with death row. And I <laughs> All right, so this is one that uh ryan you actually wanted to talk about yeah um and you have some stories that were really interesting mm -hmm. but we watched uh dear mama on mm -hmm. hulu um it's the tupac documentary mm -hmm. it's basically about him and his mom yeah and uh it's it's really well done actually I it, think. Is. Did, it is did you learn anything oh yeah I learned a lot. There's a lot about his mom that I didn't know that shaped his background into who he became. So, well, you made some pretty outlandish comments. Uh, <laughs> Why you always gotta last say week? that? Why Said that. You say I had some one of theories. N one of NF songs was bigger than or better. No, 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 no. Whoa. I like better than Dear Mama. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So greater. So I like that's the Dear crazy. Mama song. Puts but it to I, shame. I think. Oh, he's he he a football fan. Though. He, that's, that's NF, probably... <laughs> he said NF Mama song was better than Dear Mama. Yeah, was yeah because I like wow. I like the way he was I even projecting song. I his to song to his mother. But now like, you think what? So what now? <laughs> you think what now? <laughs> so, I mean, definitely Tupac's uh, had a bigger impact, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But what I'm and saying is, like, for me, <laughs> for me, I love the fact that he is, that he has changed his whole opinion of his mother and is now looking at it like, no, mom's talking to me from heaven. Like, I think that kind of happened with Tupac, too. I mean, his mom said uh, he for forgave her. Yeah. I mean, he had yeah. to forgive oh, her. Oh, yeah, yeah. He went through a lot with her. Um, so, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was powerful, man. Just there, so here's some of the things I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he lived in Atlanta. Yeah, I did. Was, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've been to his house. I didn't know that. Um, and he I haven't been to his house. I, I've been to his house. Like, he was building one. Okay. In uh, over off of um, South Atlanta uh -huh. before he, before he passed. Wow! But it's still up, still over there. Like it was vacant for years, probably like seven eight years. It was vacant. Yeah. So so it's I didn't huge. pull up to see. It was a museum here for Tupac. The Tupac Museum here. I've been there before. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't even know Atlanta had anything to do. Yeah, he got a statue and everything in front of it. Yeah. Um. That's so crazy. a lot of his origins, I didn't know exactly how it all started with Digital Underground and and um. And just hearing his his younger interviews when he was still in high school, yeah. he basically sounded exactly the same, just a little bit more innocent. Yeah, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still same. I would passion. say pure, a little, a little more, more pure. pure. Yeah, pure. he was talking about a girl that he liked, and uh, <laughs> she rejected him for some yeah. reason. You could tell. He's he like, I'm her. a nice guy. Yeah. I want to yeah, be a nice guy. And, but but then, then, then he was like, all his friends. He was trying to be different than all his yeah, friends who were yeah. kind of dogs. Yeah. And he said, when she rejected him, he, he was like, well, I'm gonna just do like them. And that was like the the bad guy origin story. Yeah. Um, but I always said this, man. I, I think what the documentary is showing me is that I think we so hype Death Row Tupac that we don't show enough love to Interscope Tupac. Because mm, okay. Interscope Tupac was more like political, was more thought provoking, was more that. Whereas All Eyes on Me and Machiavelli was like, I'm on, I'm on a war tour of revenge and I got to get everybody who got me. You know what I'm saying? But when yeah. you look back on those other projects, he was he was still more... I always felt like I always felt like he was like a mixture of Public Enemy and NWA a little bit, but he was more like Public Enemy, where it was like more political and more like thought more before, and more conscious. caring about black people. Yeah. And then like even his speeches that he was giving, when people was like, "Yo, man, you need to watch your mouth," he's like, "I don't care." Yeah, I don't <laughs> he was going, a yeah. Oh man, um, <laughs> that one that one speech he was giving when they were like, they were that, I guess he was at the um, the Nation, yeah, and they were like, "Do not cuss," and you could tell the guys were like. And they were terrified in the back. <laughs> but he was calling them on a stuff like he was like Latasha right. got shot in the back and y'all didn't do nothing. Y'all yeah, y'all y'all playing games. You know who yeah. has the best dashiki? Yeah, and he went at yeah. the NAACP. Too. Yeah. So Dang. he always had like a brash. Even when he's wrong, he just sound right. You know what I mean? Like that's that's just kind of Tupac was. I think you got to start off by like setting the narrative of his mom being one of the Black Panthers. Yeah, Black Panthers, Black Panthers with a voice. Like yeah. she wasn't just she was in there in the crowd. Yeah. She was on the front lines. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I, but I think even even when you look at that part of how he felt, how they treated her when she started doing drugs, yeah. like they left him alone. They yeah. left they like he was that he was angry about you seeing that. My mother was on the front line, and y'all didn't do nothing to help her. And she was cracked out, and y'all just just left me, who's supposed to represent the future of this, yeah. alone. You know what I mean? So That's I'm tough. angry. I'm angry at the system, and I'm angry at y'all too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I the other thing that stood out to me is it's very pro Tupac documentary, right? It's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, definitely yeah. on his side. Yeah. Even, <laughs> yeah. They're like, because his mom basically said, "I want I want you to show everything, the good and the bad." Right? Yeah. 
but it's i mean they're showing the bad but it's definitely yeah but tupac is you know so it's very pro Tupac. yeah uh definitely trying to clean up the history of the black panthers it's very pro black panthers so um if you watch mm. it just just know it is very pro um yeah mm-hmm. but i mean it's it's honest though yeah. I, I would say most of it is is pretty honest um mm. it does kind of seem to kind of glorify his kind of bad attitude sometimes oh yeah like they, you know they're kind of bragging about that he kind of shot some cops yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy bragging about that. yeah he seemed to be a little braggy about that right but there was a that's lot about a lot. there was a lot about his history <clears throat> of um violence that seemed like they tried to make it oh that's that's pot. like was was interesting to me was how they talked about two different sides of him yeah, right yeah. um and how close family members were like Yo, that was not two different sides of Pac. Pac was everything yeah. that we say he is. But then you hear the bodyguards and other folks and the testimonies is like, yo, nah, he was he was out there. He was seemed but like he had he, multiple post- he personality felt like, disorder. I would say this, and it's gonna sound shocking to people, but I felt like he felt like he was the savior for black people. Yeah. And that's the why he shot those cops. Yeah. Because he was like like they didn't do anything to him particularly, but he saw a black person get misjustice yeah, and was yeah. like yeah. I need to go do something about that. Yeah. So, so Mission, you, you said you knew a little bit about Tupac. So I want to know if you know what, because I thought I did too. <clears throat> what do you know about how he started? Because he started as a dancer, right? He was kind of yeah, like backup. Yeah. What do you know about that whole story on how he got started? Um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know he was a dancer. I, I knew he was into like um, acting. acting. He went yes, to yes, uh, yes, yes. Went ballet. To, like, he did ballet school or something yeah. like that. I know he spent time in the Bay. Yeah, with um, yeah. like U forty. So that that's kind of more because I was I was born in eighty nine. So like I seen you know saw some, some of it. Happen, some of yeah. it. I was younger, but you know he was a um, baby. Dang, yeah, he was a baby. But, <laughs> 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 but yeah. Pop was yeah. so, so <laughs> awesome, <laughs> right. Ooh, high school. I remember that year. Yeah, that was <laughs> crazy. I was in high school too when you got killed. Oh, not me, not me. No. <laughs> yeah, <you're good. laughs> I was like, wait a minute, yes, you were. Like, I'm in middle school. <laughs> I was there, I was in the sixth grade. Yeah, I was, oh, it was wait. close. It was, I was on the last line. year, last year, eighth grade. Eighth grade, yeah. Eighth grade, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so it, to me, it was just, it was just surprising. Um, just some of the details, like it's, yeah. it's, 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 and 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 it's well done, like it's crafted yeah. really mm-hmm. well. I thought. One, one thing I seen when, um, because my wife was watching, I haven't watched it yet, but it was a part where he was in court, mm-hmm. yeah, and he was saying how, like, they were saying how he like moved the whole court, I mean, oh, the, yeah, the yeah. judge mm-hmm. and everything by yeah. like what he said or something yeah. like that. So that, I thought that's that a viral funny. clip that's going around right now. You yeah. know what's funny in, in my household, I was sh- my wife was watching a documentary and my wife was like, okay, you know, she didn't really know Tupac like that like <clears> as much <throat> as I knew about him. But she was like, okay, cool, cool. And then I was just, she was like, yeah, he seemed like a, you know, okay guy, like this, that, and the other. And I was like, have you seen Hit Him Up though? Like, have you seen the video? <laughs> have you heard the words? Like, like I think personally, and I had this conversation with Jeremiah before, yeah. like, yo, like, that hit him up video is probably the worst I've ever heard. Like as far as violence goes, as far right. as like the stuff you say about people and yeah. and how you want to take revenge, and I and then my wife saw that and she was like, "Oh, okay, he yeah, he was you know." So, and I hate to say it, but it's not really about how you start; it's how you finish, yeah. you know. And that hit him up video was released two months before he died, so it was like wow. that was the last real image you had of yeah, him. Yeah. That didn't get cleaned up, you know. So I mean, then, what, then the night it up when yeah, he was jumping somebody. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think the thing was he was trying to clean it up because I've seen a, I've seen like one of the, they were saying the next one of his next releases was called One Nation, where yeah. it was like him with a lot of like rappers from the East Coast that wasn't like affiliated with Bad Boy and mm-hmm. nothing like that, but just like Boot Camp Click, yeah, Fat yeah. Joe, and producers from the East Coast. So he was trying to. Um, clean up those image of his perspective because people thought he hated New York and was like he didn't hate New York he just had he had problems with people from New York so I just think that like like you said but I think people didn't get a chance to see his turning thing that's why I always that's why I said in the beginning it felt like that's why I was like I always felt like Interscope Tupac was better than Death Row Tupac because Interscope Tupac felt like I got a voice to say I want people to know the struggle of black America. I mm. want people to know the struggle of what black young black men are going through right now in the nineties. And and you could tell what he was saying that by that interview he had on that yeah. talk show about like how to get out those frustrations and 
really talk about those issues. But when he went to death row, it felt like all those issues were out the window and it's now to be on this gangster, gangster mm -hmm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because before he was, I mean, the Thug Life album, Strictly for My Two, Par Two Apocalypse Now, and then even Me Against the World, mm -hmm. he still had those elements, but it was more like political, West Coast political rap. And like, I got to tell y'all what's going on. But then All Eyes on Me was just <clears throat> a little bit different. You know what I mean? Than what he was putting out, in my personal opinion. Did y'all hear the song? It was a, um, a song that a guy released. It said, Tupac Had to Die. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So it was a guy from L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who was like the Glows nephew Malone. or something Glo like yeah. that of the guy who killed him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was saying Pac was pretty much in some stuff that he shouldn't even. Yeah. I thought about it when you said he um, mm -hmm. jumped the guy. Like, that wasn't even Tupac's, you know, situation. It was because somebody got jumped yeah. outside of a. Chain was stolen. Yeah, some chain yeah. was stolen. They got mm -hmm. jumped. So they seen him. And it was like Pac mm -hmm. retaliate, and that's why he got killed. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or something that's that he crazy. really had nothing to do with. Yeah. But it's because of the yeah. affiliation with Death Row, mm -hmm. you know, being, yeah. you know, in the West Coast yeah. politics and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I heard about that too, where the guy that, that did it, that they were saying affiliate who mm -hmm. jumped ended up killing him. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing was that he had to. He had to get get back because yeah, exactly because he from the hood and they heard about that it was like yo you let a rapper yeah you let yeah. that happen and it was He's like real gangsters yeah so I think you <laughs> just got caught up in he got he just got caught up man yeah. and I think at the at the age is like you you want money you want power you want you want to be feared in the industry and he thought getting with these people would give him that power was, and stuff was I remember I remember reading something I mean I so you know once I started watching the documentary. I started going down this rabbit hole where I started looking up things on mm -hmm. YouTube and, you know, you can't trust everything you hear, but there was people close to him that were telling stories about him. Um, they just said he was always looking to take on somebody, you mm -hmm. know, like no matter what it was, yeah. he wasn't afraid of anybody, but he was looking to take on somebody. But he had also told one of his bodyguards that, you know, I'm not going to be here by the time I'm 25. Yeah. It was like, because the that. life I'm living is so reckless, somebody's going to get me, yeah. you know? <laughs> And so, um, yeah, so so when I was, like, listening to Hit Him Up, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's you're going to make it. a lot of people want to come after you after that. Like, that yeah. was just crazy. Okay. But then when my wife was just like, I can't believe he really said those things. And I'm like, yeah, he put it out there, like, you know, I'm going to make sure your kids don't grow. Like, it's crazy stuff hey. he's saying, you know, in that, in that so, video. So what do you say to, to young men that look up to Tupac? Because a lot of people love Tupac's bravado yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Because to me, it's to me, it comes off very dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so, yeah, But yeah. a lot of people look up to it like, oh, I want to be like that. Yeah. So what, what what's the... If Tupac was <laughs> still here, I don't know what I would say to him to get him to realize that, man... The same passion for God would you you would you would change the whole world. Yeah. yeah, I think he felt like he was, but it's just it's off. It's just yeah. off. Like, what do you? How do you fix that? Oh man, um, I don't know. I mean, I think the thing is, your passion for God and your passion for for him, he probably was feeling that God was giving him the passion for his people. Yeah, and you're talking about yeah. African American, like to speak for them. But I think it just got lost in the sauce when he got caught up with Death Row. And I, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're going to talk about it because, like I said, I only got the two because I, I don't know what's yeah, coming out with it. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm sure how they, I want to see how they talk about it even. And, and you got to give credit, I'm, this is a side note, credit to the guy that's directing it because allegedly Tupac got him beat up. You see oh, that yeah, part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah, I couldn't yeah. direct nothing there. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Nah, no, well, no. You, you, you got some dudes to stomp me out. <laughs> I don't was... know if I could do that because they turned the camera on him like, all right, like, you talk about it because he was like, Tupac didn't beat me up but 10 other of his friends did. Like, Yeah, but it, it's also, that's it, crazy. It's also <laughs> it's fame, no variety. I'm like, I'm at the watch it. Crazy. Fame, the reason, the reason and a check in that too. The reason why we wanted to talk about it because it reminded us of genius, um, the Kanye. Yeah, documentary. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, man, this is, this seems like the next okay. big yeah, documentary yeah, yeah, yeah. of a person. Okay. Yeah, but I, I think going back to talk about what you're saying is, I think, I think people got to understand that your passion for God can be on that level as well, but it's going to look very different right now when you got people have they're passionate about race they're passionate about sexuality they're passionate about different things and it's now when you're talking about jesus and you're saying like you're going against the grain because everything else is normal you know what i'm saying like it's normal to be passionate about your race it's normal to be passionate about your sexuality it's mm -hmm. normal to be passionate mm -hmm. about whatever you're passionate about but when you say i'm passionate about jesus and take a stand yeah. on it yeah. yeah that looks like an alien <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. like 
you got to understand you can still have that passion but but then also i think for him that how do you how do you present i think his environment turned him into certain things you get what i'm saying like mm-hmm. when you talking about his environment with his friends i'm like he sounded like us like i want to be with one girl i want to be yeah sounded yeah that, yeah but then when you get him around that environment and he's seeing like that's not working to be yeah. the nice guy you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. And I think that's the one of those things where you gotta say put people in the right environment and see if they blossom and be become that rose out of concrete. All right, well, let's let's do this because um, I want to have time to talk to Mission and um, One Keon. So let's take a break right now. You in the field with the track stars Ryan Wright, Sean Tan, and DJ Jeremiah. Let's go. Love you. 